Hey, hello. Um, so I was supposed to do a presentation today on uh, when does life begin? Well, when does life end? Uh, basically an argument in defense of early abortions, in defense of most abortions. And um, un unfortunately, a unexpected family event came up and I can't make it. But I wanted to at least try to do a presentation, so here I am making this video. Um, it's not perfect, but it's something. So maybe it'll be useful. All right, I want to begin by reminding you that the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, and uh, that might not quite be true. There might be some new things. But this paper and the main ideas and arguments from this paper or presentation are not really new. Um, they are sort of repackaged uh, old ideas, perhaps combined in slightly new ways with some new examples, new form of presentation, and often new, new audiences who have never heard anything about any of these things. So, um, but I don't think this is anything particularly new. So the question, when does life begin, is obviously a super common question in many circles when they think about abortion. Uh, probably many people think this is like a key question, when does life begin? Tell me. And uh, I think thinking about, well, when does life end, or when can life end, be very helpful in getting people to better think about that initial question. So um, when can life end? Well, it depends on what you mean by life. So uh, there are two, or there are a number of broad options for when our lives can end. Our lives can end with the death of the body, death of the brain, death of the person. It's all gone. Call that whole body death, call it whatever you want to call it. Everything's dead, you're dead. But our lives can end in another way also. And basically the broad way our lives can end would be our consciousness ends permanently. At least this is what many people think. So there's a brain dead body. The body is alive, kept alive by machines or not, it doesn't really matter. The body is biologically alive, but the brain has been destroyed the person is gone. People are sad. Why are they sad? Because the person is gone. So a famous case I learned of from my students was that of a guy named Jean-Pierre Adams. He was a French soccer player. In his 30s, he went into the hospital for some sort of minor knee operation. Something went wrong and he wound up in a deep coma for 30 years or so. And then eventually his body died somewhat recently. So, um, you know, when did he die? Well, it depends on what you mean by he and died. You know, his body died after 60 years or so. Many people would think, well, he, the person, died uh, at around age 30. He died when he went into the coma. Other simple cases. Would you like to take a nap? Sure. Would you like to take a nap and never wake up? Even if your body stayed alive. Many people are going to think, no, I wouldn't want that to happen. Because if that happened, I would die. I would cease to exist, even if my body stayed alive. So, when can your life end? Two options. Well, basically, one option, two different ways. Um, your consciousness ends, but your body stays alive. Or, your consciousness ends, uh, and your body dies. Now, of course, some people think that they won't really die. You know, even though their body will die, they will somehow keep on trucking into uh, an afterlife with no body or a different body or whatever. Um, that would, yeah, so that's another view. But that sort of view supports thinking that the person and their body are distinct. And you don't have to be like a substance dualist to think this. You could just be a property dualist of some kind that, you know, people sort of emerge from their body. When you have a complex enough physical thing, you can have a person. Uh, doesn't mean they're the same thing as that physical thing. Doesn't mean they're a sep separate thing. Could exist without that body. But, uh, yeah. All right, so if your life ends when consciousness ends, because you are that consciousness, well, when does your life begin? When consciousness starts. Is that early in pregnancy? Is that at an embryo? No. Is it a beginning fetus? No. So I'm inclined to think the various end-of-life cases should lead us to think that, well, we are essentially minded beings, and so that would mean that before you have the start of a mind, you wouldn't have us. So people can end before their bodies die, and people begin after their bodies start. So a view like this leads you to uh, reject Marquis's type arguments. Um, no embryos don't have futures like ours, because to have a future like yours or mine, 
you have to be connected psychologically psychologically to that future. And so a mindless, never had a mind sort of being uh, can't be connected to a future. So can't have a future like ours since doesn't sort of literally have a future. Not yet. Likewise, claims like, look, I'm wrong to kill now. I was wrong to kill at all times of my existence. I existed as an embryo, so I was wrong to kill then. Well, no. Uh, if you didn't exist as an embryo, then that wouldn't be the case. Um, furthermore, uh, this type of view just sort of assumes that wrong to kill related properties are sort of essentially had by the organism, um, not the minded being, and so you don't have to accept that. Mm -hmm. And finally, this sort of view doesn't um, have to buy claims or arguments that we are the kind, embryos are the kinds of beings that are rational beings or have a essential nature of a rational being or anything like that. Basically because, most interestingly, somebody could, could, could argue that, well, uh, okay, but the kinds of beings that are like that are uh, conscious beings. Conscious beings are the kinds of beings, or some conscious beings are the kinds of beings that um, are of a rational kind or whatever. You don't have to think that sort of mere bodies are like that. So there's an article by Peter Markey that argues that. And, of course, you can wonder, well, what's the connection between being, if, a, if an individual thing is of a kind of being that's a rational being, so therefore it must be treated like an actually rational being, what's exactly the connection here? How does that really work? So I have a number of papers from long ago where I look at what, what Francis Beckwith has to say about that, Christopher Tolleson, Robert George, and maybe some others, and... Um, find these kind of abstract arguments uh, wanting in explanation for how they really work. Since in general being of some specific kind doesn't always mean you got to be treated like you actually are of that kind. All right, so a uh, final little bit here is that um, people sometimes, uh, or pro-choice activist people out there, uh, sometimes ac accuse anti-abortion people of being sort of merely religious uh, with their arguments, and I think that's mistaken. If you actually listen to what anti-abortion people have to say, rarely do they appeal to religion. Um, th so they say, no, this is not a religious issue. This is a human rights issue. But I think there is a religious issue here, and you can see that by thinking about end-of-life issues. You know, when a body should be let, let die or even if need be, like actively killed, a unconscious body, let die, or even actively killed if somehow you need to, uh, religious factors could be relevant there. You know, religious customs about how to treat uh, permanently comatose bodies, dead bodies, could be relevant. And if they could be relevant there, well, they could be. it could be relevant at beginning-of-life issues also. So when anti-abortion folks say this is not a religious issue at all, well, it could be. All right, so the big picture here, of course, is uh, if you think about uh, what sort of really matters in life, and one way to get at that sort of issue is think about end-of-life cases, uh, you can observe that for many people, uh, being conscious is highly important to being alive. We don't want to just be biologically alive. We want to be conscious, aware, so on and so forth, and do stuff that depends on that. Well, if that's what really matters and it is, then what really matters is when that starts. Not when body starts, but when consciousness starts. And that, at the very least, again, would not be at the beginning of pregnancy, it would be later. So I think generally early abortions are fine, whereas later ones of potentially conscious and feeling fetuses, they could be wrong. At the very least, there are complications there. But, of course, addressing those complications is challenging uh, when... Well, it's challenging given sort of the current status of discourse on this topic, at least in, in public arenas. All right. Hope this is interesting. Thanks. And, of course, if you have any questions about anything, find me. Let me know. Thank you.